As time goes on, I've come to realize that I don't have too much. Well, hold on, that's not what I meant. While well, yes, I do have plenty of material things, it's the things that make up the person that I don't have too much of anymore. I have no sense of shame. I gave up my dignity years ago when I started watching anime. My brain has slowly over time been turning into mush and my sanity continues to deplete with each passing day. But do you want to know what I still have and what I'm going to be clinging on to for dear life? My virginity. Yes, that's right. And because I am constantly having to keep my guard up at the threat of it being stolen away from me, I have taken a number of measures in order to ensure that no harlot can come creeping up on me and stealing it away. In order to protect myself from this threat, I have found a very powerful repellent. A repellent known as JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Battle Tendency, also called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 2, Joseph Joestar, His Proud Lineage. Ran from November 1987 to March 1989 in Weekly Shonen Jump. For this review, I read the 2015 Viz Media Edition, which comes as a nice hardback book, with author's commentary included at the end. Now, since we talked about Hirohiko Araki before in the Phantom Blood review, link in the top right corner, the biography section here is going to be brief, and I want to focus more on the actual development of Part 2. Araki was born June 7, 1960 in Sendai, Japan. His first published work was in 1980 and was titled Poker Under Arms, which landed him the honor of selected work for the 1980 Tezuka Awards. As Araki's career progressed, his art style became noted for his use of over-the-top gore and fashionably dressed characters striking strange poses. All of these traits can be seen in full force in his most famous work, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, which began publication in Weekly Shonen Jump starting in 1987. Now, Araki has talked extensively about the development of Part 2, and I want to highlight some of his comments here. But first, spoiler warning for Part 1 Phantom Blood. Just skip the rest of the biography section in order to avoid it. At the end of Part 1, Araki killed off Jonathan, which, as he says, was unprecedented to have a main character die in a weekly Shonen Jump story. Because of this, Araki intentionally designed the main character of Part 2, Joseph Joestar, to look very similar to Jonathan. Though they may look the same, they are almost nothing alike. Where Jonathan is a gentleman, Joseph is a tricky, swindling type character with a big mouth and quick wits. Araki also challenged Weekly Shonen Jump trends with the character of Lisa Lisa, Unlike other female characters that would show up in other Weekly Shonen Jump titles, Araki said that those characters were all cute types, essentially the stereotype of a man's ideal girl. So he intentionally created Lisa Lisa to be this warrior type character who was extremely intelligent and very threatening. Finally, I wanted to mention the Pillar Men. He designed them to be godlike, having to ramp things up after Dio so he based them off of statue designs from ancient Rome and Japan. These are just a few choice examples I wanted to mention that helps to really highlight how Part 2 is going to be different from Part 1, and different from really anything else being made at the time. There's more information he gives out there about the manga's development, so if you want to read more, then I'd recommend picking up the books for Part 2. They all come with a short author's commentary at the end of each volume that can give you more information. Battle Tendency takes place 49 years after the end of Phantom Blood. It starts with a much older speed wagon, now a millionaire, arriving at an archaeological dig in Mexico. 
led by his company, the Speedwagon Foundation. He's also joined by Strazio, one of the three strangers that helped Jonathan in Part 1. The Speedwagon Foundation has made a troubling discovery. It's a living being that is infused with a stone pillar, surrounded by stone masks like the one that Dio used in Part 1. Speedwagon wants Strazio to destroy the so-called Pillar Man sleeping in the stone. But he betrays him, wanting the stone mask for himself, in order to stay young forever. Strazio then attacks Speedwagon and chucks him into the river. Meanwhile, the main character, Joseph Joestar, the grandson of Jonathan Joestar, is currently living in New York with his grandmother, Irina. Joseph saves a pickpocket named Smokey from the cops. And this is where we learn about Joseph's ability to use Hamon, a fighting style that uses sunlight energy passed through the body by breathing. Joseph and Smokey end up becoming friends, and they, along with Arena, go to dinner where they learn about what happened to Speedwagon in Mexico. Strazio, fearing Joseph's Hamon abilities, goes after him, and we get to see just what kind of fighter Joseph is. The two clash, and Strazio is defeated. But with his dying breath, Joseph learns about the Pillar Man and travels to Mexico, where he then discovers that Speedwagon is still alive and is being held captive by the Nazis, who have recovered the Pillar Man in order to study it. Under the command of Rudolf von Strahelm, they awaken the Pillar Man to do tests on him, giving him the name Santana. Santana has amazing godlike abilities, being extremely intelligent able to break apart and morph his body, and just being basically indestructible. Joseph arrives in time to save Speedwagon and fight Santana, succeeding after exposing him to his one weakness, the sun. They also learn from Strohelm that three more pillar men have been discovered in Rome, and so Joseph and Speedwagon travel there to meet with Will Sapelli's grandson, Caesar, in order to destroy the pillar men. But they are too late. The pillar men named Wamu, Esedes, and their leader Cars have already awakened and are in search of a precious stone called the Red Stone of Aja, which will allow them to survive in the sunlight, thus being able to completely take over the world. Joseph tries stopping them, but they are just too strong. Thanks to his quick wits, however, he ends up escaping death by getting Wamu to agree to let him train or to become stronger so that he may be a more worthy opponent. Wamu agrees, but in order to keep Joseph to his word, he and his steadies implants rings of poison in his throat and on his heart that will dissolve in 30 days if he is unable to get the antidote which they both possess. Having survived their first encounter with the Pillar Men, Joseph and Caesar leave for Venice in order to train with the Haman master, Lisa Lisa. So, will Jojo get strong enough to defeat the Pillar Men in time? Well, you're just going to have to pick up the manga in order to find out for yourself. Starting with the art, it still retains that bizarre goodness from part one that Araki has become famous for. It still has that over-the-top gore, characters with highly exaggerated features and muscles, and moments of characters striking strange poses. It also still retains that movement and heavy use of dynamic angles and shots that I enjoyed so much in the first part. The art continues to be highly detailed, features heavy use of shading, and highly, highly detailed backgrounds and objects. I also enjoyed the way that Rocky draws his goons. He makes them look so goofy that truly adds to the bizarreness of the manga. Speaking of which, the designs of the characters continue to be impeccably done. The Pillar Men's designs especially are striking and memorable. As for the story, it's a great improvement over Phantom Blood. But it's still just not there quite yet. Starting off for me, Battle Tendency is really where Jojo truly begins to feel like Jojo. We start to see those elements of absurdity, strangeness, and just pie-in-the-sky moments that really defines Jojo's bizarre adventure. 
Moments like the cop wiping his booger on Joseph's face and the pigeon flying out of Caesar's mouth are just a few examples of bizarreness found within the manga. Phantom Blood was just very light on these strange sort of elements, but it's here that Iraqi really begins to lay it on thick and makes the manga so much more fun and enjoyable to read. Now, of course, I wanted to mention the fights in this manga, being that this is sort of the main focus of the story. Going back to Phantom Blood, it had some good fights in it, but they were few and far between. Battle Tendency, however, has not only more, but better fights this time around. I personally liked the switch from fights being decided by brute strength to more of being mind games where clever tactics rule the day. Now again, we did get a little of that in Phantom Blood and... Those fights tended to be my favorite, but Battle Tendency improves this aspect greatly and makes for some interesting and intense battles. I especially enjoyed it whenever Joseph went up against Wamu. Joseph's fast talking and quick wits and Wamu's strength and ability just made for some very intense fights. Overall, I felt that theirs were some of the best ones in the manga. I also really like how they flushed out Haman more. One of my main problems with Phantom Blood was that the rules and abilities of Haman were not fully established or very clear at all. But Battle Tendency worked extensively to remedy this. Now, it's not all improvements though. The pacing in this manga is a bit janky at times such as Joseph's discovery of what happened in Mexico, the ending felt weird and rushed, and finally, some of the characters were just not fully established enough. In fact, when it comes to battle tendency, my real problems with the manga lie mostly with the characters. Starting with the main villains, the Pillarmen, they're not very well established and just end up not being very interesting. At least when it comes to cars and steadies. I found Wamu to be pretty interesting, however, but that's because he ended up getting the most screen time in the manga, allowing him to be flushed out more. Estadis is barely in the manga, making him not very compelling or interesting, and then Cars was just sort of a conventional bad guy character. As with Cars and Estetis, the manga has a real problem with properly developing and giving characters purpose. Characters such as Weird Beck, Smokey, and Loggins. Smokey starts out with the role of the sort of commentator like Speedwagon and Phantom Blood, but then he just disappears for the majority of the manga. Overall, his character just felt pretty pointless. Same with Loggins, who was also barely in the manga, and Weird Beck got a bit more screen time, but in the end, I felt his character was just pretty pointless. Now, not all the characters were bad. Joseph was a fun main character this time around. He just had so much charm and wasn't just a squeaky clean character like Jonathan was. Caesar was also a good character. He was an interesting addition to the manga in terms of giving Joseph a sort of rival, which added a bit of spice to the manga. Seeing him and Joseph banter was pretty fun to watch, and his character arc was pretty satisfying. Lisa Lisa also made for an interesting mentor character. Her character was just such a cool badass, and her arc ended up being highly intriguing. Overall, while yes, Battle Tendency is a vast improvement over Phantom Blood, and yes, this is a much more enjoyable and fun read, it still has its problems, however, that I just cannot overlook. It feels much more like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure now, but it still needs a few tweaks to turn it into a truly fantastic manga. I would give Battle Tendency a higher recommendation more than I would Phantom Blood, but for its flaws, I'm still going to have to give it a 7 out of 10. 
Though, to differentiate it from part 1, let's just say that's a high 7 out of 10. And that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you agreed with what I had to say about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Battle Tendency. I really want to stress that Battle Tendency really was a fun read. But it still just had some problems that really brought it down a couple pegs. I hope to see you around on this channel again real soon. Goodbye.